I've been on a journey, an expedition, a mission to discover the greatest gaming and streaming PC experience. The obstacles, the trials, they only make the reward that much sweeter. But I've got to tell you, when I started, I never expected to find what I did. It's a, it's a PC. I named it Orthrus. I'm a full-time Twitch streamer and a full-time YouTuber. Like, like I do both, like real. Like, I feel like most people it's like, oh, are you a YouTuber who occasionally goes live or are you a streamer who occasionally throws up a YouTube video? No, I, I do both. I do both 100%. It's a handful. But at this point in my career, I've built uh, upwards of 15 to 20 PCs. I've learned a lot and I felt like it was about time that I built my own PC that I was proud of enough uh, to name. So I did. And his name is Orthrus. Two heads on a single body built inside the Fantex Enthu 719. The Intel based gaming PC on a mini ITX on the bottom mount. The Ryzen based streaming PC on the full ATX top mount. Both CPUs liquid cooled and uh, a handful of extras. But before we start talking about the actual PC components, I wanna to talk to you about a handful of interesting decisions I made with this PC. First off, a two PC setup. Even though it's in one case, this is still two PCs, two separate motherboards, two separate CPUs, two completely separate units in a single case. And with how often I talk about how capable the new Turing uh, NVENC encoder is, uh, I still decided to go with a dual PC setup. I've been running a two PC setup for a while and I love it. It allows me to do things that you just can't do on a single PC. Now I've, I've raved about single PC setups, not because I think they're better, but because I think they're simpler. Most people looking into streaming don't understand how to route audio from one PC to another while also routing to the person, the microphone and the headphones. It gets confusing. And single PC setups are just a more intuitive and simple option and they're incredibly capable. But if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know I run two Go XLRs at the same time, a full size and a mini. And as of right now, you're not able to plug both into a single PC. That along with a handful of capture card trickery I like to do, a single PC setup was not a viable option for me. Speaking of capture cards, the next decision I made with this, I have three capture cards in this build. The first one being a Magwell Quad HDMI capture card. This card is basically four capture cards built into one and I'm not actually using all four ports. I have at one point, I'm not currently, I like the expandability. If I ever wanted to add multiple cameras, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. The other capture card being a 4K60 Pro, which I use to capture my gaming PC with this tiny little HDMI ribbon that goes out of the GPU on the bottom up to that capture card. And the last capture card being an HD60 Pro for my main camera. And the reason I plug my main camera into this instead of the Magwell card is it allows me to use Elgato's flashback recording. Using gaming footage in YouTube videos is something I plan on doing earlier. So having both of these inputs go into two separate Elgato capture cards, opening them both in separate Elgato software, I can hit a button on my stream deck and actually capture the previous 30 minutes of both of those sources in full resolution and then edit them together however I please. They're not baked onto each other as if I just recorded them directly in OBS. Plus, because it's separate software from OBS, I don't ever have to worry about some bug inside of OBS crashing my stream when I'm trying to flashback record stuff. And the last question I'm sure I'm gonna get from you guys, every other video I've seen on this case where people build dual PC setups in there, the gaming PC is on the top, the streaming PC is on the bottom. And I get that for most PC building YouTubers, gaming is the top priority, and then they've got a second smaller little rig for streaming that doesn't have a GPU, it's just using the integrated graphics on the CPU, and then that one PCIe slot they use for a capture card. Content creation and streaming for me is the top priority, and I would have never been able to plug all these capture cards in if I'd made the streaming PC the mini ITX. So streaming PC goes on top, I have all those PCIe slots, gaming PCs on the bottom, all I need to plug into it is a GPU. Problem solved. Let's jump into this build. Let's start with that streaming rig and what's in it. The streaming rig in here is basically just gutted from my old streaming PC. Same ROG Strix X570 motherboard with a Ryzen 7 3800X built into it. Do you have another mouse pad to put that on? Yeah, I didn't want to set it there. Actually, wait a second. I have, one sec, I have the perfect thing. Hold this. Oh, the box. Oh, that's trash. I have the perfect thing. Now we can put this safely. On the carpet. You've already had too much FaceTime though. Here you go. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, we're not about that. <laughs> Same RTX 2070 that was graciously sent to me by Nvidia so that I could show off the new Turing architecture for streaming, which I'm still waiting to use for RTX broadcast engine, uh, whenever that's gonna be. Which is, by the way, another reason I use a two PC setup so I can have that amount of power behind the system. Pretty much same everything except the cooler and the PSU, which we'll get into in a second. The gaming rig, however, uh, I ordered brand new. Just to keep the consistency, I again went with the ROG Strix motherboard. However, this time uh, I went Intel based. As much as I love what AMD is doing, if you're building a dedicated gaming PC, it just makes sense to go with an i9-9900K. That is a lot of nines. Again, paired with an RTX card, this time the 2080 Ti that again, uh, very graciously sent by Nvidia. Here's the 2080 Ti, this GPU's, Okay. No, it's not, it's not here. <laughs> I don't need you to touch one of those. I can just go home. He's so mean, guys. This is what I have to do. <laughs> I teach him everything he knows, and this is how he repays me. Okay. We originally cooled this PC with a really low profile Noctua cooler. And as great as Noctua's coolers are, and that little thing was a was a chunk. That thing was heavy. With how crammed those pieces were right there, especially with that 2080 Ti feeding hot air right into it, we were getting some pretty serious thermal throttling. Never pushed the streaming PC this hard, and I'm a little nervous that this kind of workload will heat up the interior of the case and cause more thermal problems for the gaming PC because they're in the same case. I gotta be a little concerned about that. I'm gonna have to have my thermals somewhere where I can see them all the time. So when NZXT sent me their Kraken Z cooler for me to display that fancy LCD, LCD? I wanna say it's an LCD screen on there. Right front and center, I was able to take the previous generation Kraken cooler throw it on the bottom one. That cooled the CPU down under load by like 30 to 40 degrees. Very glad I did that. Now, one of my favorite pieces about this rig, which by the way, usually one of the most boring pieces of a PC, uh, the PSU. It's the Fantex Revolt X, which if you're not aware of, it's built specifically for a dual PC rig like this with enough modularity for two motherboards and two CPUs, as well as all the peripherals you might possibly need. The thing's a beast and it's gorgeous. Have you felt this power supply? Uh, no. You feel this, dude. Look at this. It's like, it's like, what do you oh, call it? Like, just, it's just Corgan? straight aluminum. Look at all these things. So motherboard one, motherboard two, which is what these two are: CPU one, CPU two, and then GPUs and SATA. But you got two motherboards, two CPUs on there. And that's what we're powering this entire thing with, just a single PSU. Now there are a couple problems with this PC that are driving me nuts. First thing, shouldn't, but it does. The RGB. I wanted to go with a really clean black and kind of twinkling white look, like stars kind of thing. However, <laughs> mistakes along the way. I'm essentially using three different RGB softwares in here. We got NZXT controlling the coolers and the fans. We got MSI Aura controlling the motherboards. And we got Corsair IQ controlling both the RAM and the other fans because Here's what happened. When I plugged in both CPU liquid coolers, there was almost zero unwarmed airflow coming into the case. All the intake air was running through a radiator first that was cooling off the i9-9900K. So we had the super warm air trying to cool off two GPUs. I needed more air intake. Fortunately, this case comes with a whole extra panel of fan slots. So I went to grab three more NZXT fans to fit the look. Best Buy, unfortunately, only had Corsair, which are great fans, by the way, but now we've got Corsair fans and NZXT fans. I'm just not crazy about the different look there. Plus I have to have a Corsair hub on the back and an NZXT hub, and it's just, it's just kind of becoming a mess. Speaking of GPUs, another problem with the PC is how close the GPUs are to the glass. Makes me sick. Not only are they both vertically mounted pretty close to the glass, but if you take a look at the 2080 Ti, it's actually closer than the 2070 because of how little space there is for the mini ITX build and I didn't use low profile RAM. I had to mount the GPU in the slots closest to the glass. This is a 2080 Ti that's like less than an inch from the glass. I might be being a little triggered here, but on the GPUs, is the power going out on this one, but it goes up on the other one? Yeah, so these, this is longer. The 2080 Ti is longer, so it's, they're on the top. I know, that's so triggering though, because it's not gonna match. Okay, they're not they're not going in the same motherboard, so I know, well, I'm saying, but aesthetically, it's not gonna match. I think this, this uh, case is also gonna be pretty dark with black. So tables. you're saying you can't see the mistake? Exactly. There's definitely gonna be some thermal throttling going on here, and hopefully I don't damage it before I can fix this. However, these imperfections, they don't have to be a bad thing. They set us on a course, another journey, to a new place, Orthrus version 2.0. Are you with me? <laughs>